This northerly point of Australia was explored by officers from the good ship Beagle in 1839. And they named the harbour Port Darwin in honour of the most illustrious passenger on the Beagle, Charles Darwin. Thirty years later, a tiny settlement was founded here. And I believe that the great naturalist who wrote about the survival of the fittest would have been very interested in the story of this place. Four previous attempts to found European settlements on the north coast of Australia had all failed to survive. And Darwin itself was practically wiped out four times. It was flattened by cyclones in 1897 and 1937. And in 1942, it became the only Australian city ever to be subjected to all-out war from the air. It was called Australia's Pearl Harbour. 188 Japanese planes hit Darwin in that first raid destroying over half the town and killing more than 250 people. There were 60 more air raids on Darwin before the war ended. Christmas Eve 1974 and the rebuilt Darwin was flattened again by Cyclone Tracy. This was the big one, the worst natural disaster in Australian history. Its impact was so devastating that many people thought Darwin was at last finished. After more than a century, it could never recover from this. And yet Darwin has risen from the ashes once again. The new Darwin is a clean, modern city, and it now looks more like Australia's front door than its back paddock. But the northernmost capital still has an atmosphere quite unlike the Australian cities of the south. is Australia's most cosmopolitan city, with 50 different races and a strong Asian element. It also has strong outback characteristics, as the capital of the Northern Territory, an area six times bigger than Britain, largely occupied by giant cattle stations. Darwin's tropical setting has its drawbacks and its advantages. Either way, it's the strongest influence on the city. Tropical cyclone Tracy devastated the botanic gardens. Tropical sun and rain made them green again. Darwin keeps bouncing back. And the mayor, Dr. Ella Stack, believes the city's facing its brightest future. Obviously, uh, Cyclone Tracy changed the face of Darwin in the most dramatic fashion. But uh, here we are six years on. It's a, a new scene in Darwin. What's the most important change been since Tracy? Well, I think it's, um, you know, it's no wind, the blue, no good. I think it's improved the place. It's a uh, far more beautiful city. Uh, it's far more settled now, and people are, seem to be prouder of it, looking after it better. What do you think of the other factors that uh, are good and interesting about the new Darwin? Well, I think it's the most important thing, really, is uh, <coughs> our relationship to Asia. Darwin is almost, really, an Australian Asian city, and becoming more so each day. And I think this is important. The rest of Australia recognises the people of Darwin for instance, take their holidays in Singapore and Hong Kong, not in Sydney and Melbourne. And if you have a look around our streets, you'll see the wonderful varieties of mixtures that we have, racial mixtures. Does uh, Darwin, uh, the population of Darwin, actually reflect this uh, physically in the, the intermixture of people? It, it reflects it physically and also it reflects it mentally. I think this is particularly noticed in the Chinese temple. And it's a matter of attitudes, and we're no strangers to Asian migration. At the turn of the century, there were 4,000 Chinese here out of a population of 5,000. 5, Darwin must have some drawbacks. I'm wondering, what are the major disadvantages as you see them? Isolation. Isolation from the centres of all learning and things we need to know, medical centres, things like that. And uh, we're not really isolated and it takes us a long time to get there, but my word, the fares are ridiculous. Our national fare structure. That is our isolation. That's the, what the tyranny of distance is about, cost. The original town was founded on a peninsula reaching south to the harbour. The only direction Darwin could spread, north, was blocked by the airport. So Darwin leapfrogged the airport, and more than half the population now lives even further north, in these suburbs. There's only one road from the northern suburbs to the centre. This is the result in peak hours. 
Darwin is now a city of about 55,000 people. Most of them work in the downtown business district, in comfortable, air-conditioned, cyclone-proof buildings. But many of them live 15 kilometres away in the suburbs. Proposals for city apartment buildings were dropped. Most Darwinites preferred their own house and block of land. And now even Australia's smallest capital has the big city characteristic of suburban sprawl. We have, uh, as you see around us, a very highly developed suburban pattern, which is uh, no different to any other Australian city. June de Rosario is a member of parliament for the northern suburbs, where 60% of Darwin's population lives. Practically all the housing has been built since Cyclone Tracy, much of it in southern rather than tropical northern style. Well, I've got every confidence that the houses will uh, stand up to another cyclone, but uh, it's a very, one of the unfortunate uh, results of the cyclone was that um, the image of Darwin as a tropical town with uh, houses on stilts where you entertained and lived most of your life outdoors and uh, you had an undercover area under your house where the kids grew up and played and, and uh, you had a very outdoor-oriented lifestyle. That's all changed now. Uh, most of our houses are now on ground level and uh, while it's very pleasant on a day like this, which is uh, beautiful sunshine, not a cloud in the sky, it's, uh, it's a bit difficult in the wet season, especially if you've got young children because you can't send them out to play. The decision to build in this style on the ground was really one of uh, having to provide a large number of houses quite quickly. Well now, what's the quality of life in these new suburbs? Uh, what are the sort of problems that people face? Well, I think uh, probably one of the major problems is one of isolation. Uh, they're not the employment or recreational or social opportunities along with the residential development out here. So um, most people work in town. You mean that uh, as well as building a lot of new houses, they could perhaps have built more community centres and facilities to go with the houses? Oh, yes. Um, you see, in a, in a place of uh, 50,000 population, you don't expect to be so far from the, the things that you want to do. You expect to have easy access to these things. But, uh, uh, you know, the transportation, traffic problems that we have, even in a, in a place like this, uh, sometimes we, we think we're in a, a, a city many times the size of Darwin. Now, the younger people that mostly seem to be uh, the people who live in Darwin, do you find, in your experience, they have enough money to live well? Well, people say there's a lot of money around in Darwin, and uh, I suppose in some sectors there is, but uh, all the same, Darwin is a very expensive place in which to live. It's, uh, it's all right if, if you're in good employment, uh, if you've got uh, subsidised housing, and uh, if you're reasonably healthy and uh, you lead a good social life, that's fine, but... Uh, We've got very high unemployment, higher than anywhere else in Australia, 10% uh, or so at the moment, and uh, housing is very expensive. Even if you've lived here many years, it's, uh, you notice the, the price of uh, food on supermarket shelves and so on. Transport, everything is transported here. Transportation costs are very high. We pay sales tax on the transport component of all our consumer goods as well. Darwin still bears the scars of Cyclone Tracy. This is the skeleton of the Sea Breeze Hotel at Nightcliff. 66 people were dead or missing after Tracy, and two-thirds of Darwin's housing was destroyed. The population fell to 11,000. 